On this week's episode of What's Up Weekly, we got the details on this year's Little 500 competition. Find out who claimed the victory and how fans celebrated the greatest college weekend. And we bring the winners of the Men's Little 500 race here in studio. What's Up Weekly starts now. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's Up Weekly. I'm Sierra Hignite. And I'm Sheila Riley. It's referred to as the greatest college weekend. The Little 500 took place on Saturday and Hoosier News Source reporter Lauren Becker attended the race and emphasizes the purpose behind the annual event. Fans, riders, and competition filled the Bill Armstrong Stadium this past Saturday for the 67th annual Little 500 bike race. 33 teams competed for the winning title. After 200 laps, Black Keebles came out on top, finishing in two hours, nine minutes, and eight seconds. We've been training all year for this. We've been doing hours indoors, hours outdoors, and just being together as brothers. We just love each other so incredibly. And just to go out and do it for us, and do it for our supporters, it's just incredible. Charlie says it was not until his last set when he realized his team could take the win. And I brought it in and I just stared, I just stared down, I couldn't watch. And I looked up and I heard someone behind me say we had a 10 second gap with three laps to go and I was like, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Taking second place was Grey Goat, finishing only eight seconds behind the Black Key Bulls. I'm standing here right now at the Bill Armstrong Stadium where thousands of fans are here supporting their teams. But what most people don't realize is the special meaning behind this annual event. All the proceeds from ticket sales actually go straight back into student scholarships, which is incredible. Ever since the Student Foundation started back in 1951, over $2 million have been raised to be given directly back to students. I can't talk enough about what this organization does as far as professional leadership, philanthropic opportunity, and absolutely guaranteed lifelong friendships. Besides from providing money to students, each semester $10,000 is awarded to student organizations working on philanthropic projects. This is one of the most special things that you can be a part of at IU. and I can't even begin to describe how incredible it feels. For Hoosier News Source, I'm Lauren Becker. Thanks, Lauren. Well, we have some very special guests joining us in studio today, and we'd like to take this time to congratulate the winners of the 2017 Little 500 Men's Race. So today we do have the members of the Black Key Bulls bike team. Guys, thank you so much for being here. So first, Kevin, I want to ask you, you actually crossed the line first. I did, Crossed yes. that finish line first. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about what was going through your mind at that point? Sure, absolutely. Um, it's an unreal experience. I mean, uh, we weren't planning on having me finish the race. Uh, we had to oh. play some things out uh, different than we thought. And I just stay, had to be on the bike for the end of the race. And wow. um, with one lap to go, came around, just uh, came to the finish line. And it's just unreal experience. You can't describe so it. So when did you kind of realize that that was the moment of, wow, this is about to be, this is about to be like the winning lap or, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm about to cross this, right. I'm going to finish out this race. So going into it, uh, the last uh, 20 or so laps, we were kind of ahead. And okay. um, we had a decent lead, so we just had to keep that moving. And then... Um, the race wasn't over till it's over, so that's right. Um, the last few laps, just had to make sure we held that, and then it wasn't really real until you crossed the finish line. Yeah, that's so true. Mm. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And Xavier, can you tell me a little bit about the training that went into uh, prepping for this race? Yeah, so uh, it started pretty much last year. Kevin and I, uh, rookies on the team, last year together. Wow. Uh, even though he's a year older than me, so mm -hmm. um, started at the same time, and so we came in. Uh, after last year's race, the summer is more casual riding, just, okay. you know, stay fit, you know, don't put on a bunch of weight, don't, <laughs> you know, try not to lose as, as much fitness as possible, and then once we come back in the fall semester, we do follow a pretty strict training plan all the way up to the race where um, we go through, you know, a couple different blocks to build certain fitness and with focus on different types of workouts, so it'll be, you know, X amount of workouts this week, X amount of miles, you know, you need to go lift this much, bike this much, um, but usually uh, an average load is about 15 to 18 hours a week, Wow. Uh, depending okay. on the rider and, you know, his schedule. So. Okay, and then it changes a little bit leading up to the race? Mm -hmm. the, the last two, like two or three weeks, I would say, are 
Um, about one to two workouts a week, okay. uh, lighter than average. Um, we're on the track at that point. Um, so usually just a couple sprints mm -hmm. and easy riding just to make sure the legs are as fresh as possible come race day. Mm -hmm. Well, it definitely seemed like it worked <laughs> and it definitely paid off. Yeah, it did, yeah. So um, can you tell me a little bit about probably what was the most rewarding part of this experience for you? Oh, there's a, a lot I can answer that with. Um, to start off, I mean, coming in after crossing the line, um, did one lap afterwards, kind of realizing what had just happened and mm -hmm. uh, coming into the pit and just jumping off the bike to Aww. into the arms of my teammates and then uh, seeing the fam family and friends behind, um, it's just, that's when it became real. Yeah. You could see the impact you just had. Yeah, that's so great. And then similar, any kind of different? Oh, I mean, it is... Yeah, it, it is a crazy experience. I'd say coming away from it, I think the most rewarding for me thing for me personally is Charlie, who is the one senior that raced with us, and another junior, Noah, is this was his third race. Wow. And he's been on the podium every year that he's raced, but last year we got third, and the year before that he was second. And so being able to kind of send him off as a winner, mm -hmm. um, as a champion of Little Five, um, you know, he was – tearing up getting choked up he was on the ground after we won and so wow. just kind of helping him kind of end with reaching his goal of being little five champion was it was special so well that's so great it really seems like teamwork was sort of the you know right. mm -hmm. uh, main thing that was going on with you guys there so that's really awesome well again we want to congratulate you guys on your big win and thank you so much for being here today yeah, thank thanks you. for having us and now we are actually going to move on to the women's race 32 teams competed in the 30th women's little 500 race on friday what's up weekly reporter mackenzie young went onto the infield to bring us the final results from the track ladies mount your little 500 bicycles it's the words almost every iu student yearns to hear every april the Little 500 weekend began Friday with what was sure to be an intense race. Just weeks before the event, Delta Gamma made headlines as their 2017 bike team broke the record for the fastest qualifying time since 2009. Shortly after the green flag was waved and the women began their 100 laps, it began to rain on the parade, but that didn't stop the women and their motivation to win the title. Here at the Armstrong Stadium, bikers and their organizations excitement are at an all-time high as the Little 500 women's race comes down here. With only one major accident occurring around laps 20 and 25, Delta Gamma held up their reputation battling between the first five spots for a majority of the first half of the race. Although the four riders put up a good fight, it was not the outcome that they had expected. For junior rider Rachel Brown, this is her first competitive race since joining Kappa Alpha Theta at the end of her freshman year. It's an incredible feeling. It's something that I've imagined for myself for a long time, but to actually experience it is something completely different. Not only did the team make their own history by winning the most races in the 30 runnings of the women's race, but one rider has a more special ending to celebrate. I was not the one to complete the last lap. That was our incredible senior, Grace Bennett, who, yeah, we, I think we're planning on having her do that for us, and that's because we had a lot of faith in her ability to. Brown says it was the constant motivation and support of her coach, family, and alumni that helped the team be the best that they could out on that rainy track. What you saw today was a product of a lot of work and not just 100 laps written very hard strategically. For Who's Your New Source, I'm Mackenzie Young. Congratulations to the Kappa Alpha Theta and Black Key Bulls writers and all the other writers that participated. Coming up after the break, we've got tips for sporting fitness fashion trends for the summer. And we've got the details about a new sequel for a popular Disney movie. Stay with us. And it's an honor to be here. After suffering a season-ending injury in late March, as you can see behind me,
While everyone seems to be talking about the weather here, heating up here at IU, there may be something Frozen to sing about in the near future. <laughs> That's right, Sheila. Disney has just announced Frozen 2 will be released in November of 2019. And while some people may think this is news geared towards a much younger audience, I have to say that I'm pretty excited to sing along with the sequel. I'd have to agree, Sierra. I remember seeing Frozen for the first time with my younger cousins, and I was pleasantly surprised how much I actually enjoyed <laughs> watching it myself. And while we can expect a different storyline and some new songs, Adina Menzel and Kristen Bell are set to return as the voices of Elsa and Anna. I cannot wait. I'm sure there will be plenty of people waiting to see all the similarities and differences to the first movie. But maybe not as many people as the fans as the new hit on Netflix, the new Netflix series, 13 Reasons Why. Yes, yeah, Sierra, it has only been about a month since the Netflix original hit the internet, and it's already reached the most tweeted show for 2017. Now, this may have to do with the hashtags and the memes that are blowing up the internet and sparking conversation, not only with fans of the show, but also with the haters. Yeah, the show follows a teenager named Hannah Baker after she commits suicide as she explains the 13 Reasons Why. So I'm definitely not shocked with the controversy, the controversy the memes have caused on social media. And that's not the only unfortunate bit of news that's circulating social media at this time. Former Bachelor Chris Souls was recently arrested for allegedly leaving the scene of a fatal car crash in Iowa. Yeah, Chris Souls appeared in court just a day after the accident where bail was set to $10,000. That is so sad to hear because I always thought he was such a good guy. It, it stinks to hear some bad news about someone like that. But uh, on a lighter note, we do have Amelia Miles with us in studio to fill us in on what's up in fitness fashion. Amelia? Athletic wear is something that everybody has in their closet, whether it be a pair of basketball shorts for men or a pair of leggings for women. This type of clothing is so comfortable, yet so fashionable. Today I brought in two people to show off these trending pieces that will have you standing out in a good way, either in the gym or on your way to class. So I brought in Nicholas Tanzimore and Mary Beth Sullivan. So, to describe what these lovely people have on today, they have little loose um, tank top that's black. She's like all coordinating today mm -hmm. with some Nike um, spandex shorts just to make sure everything's compressed together with along with Reebok shoes and Nike socks. Good choice. Good choice. Thank you. you on the other hand has a nice windbreaker. Love windbreakers. It's like the new trend. I swear. Um, the nice um, jogger. Would you say jogger or soccer? More jogger. Soccer pants. Soccer pants with a nice little Nike touch of the I know that you have a couple holes in them, but we're gonna let that slide. So, what would you say is like your like favorite part of this ensemble you have on? Um, my favorite part of this is um, I really like the open back because it, it's Ooh, revealing it's something, but not in like a risque way, but it's still revealing. So I like it. Yeah. I like. What about you? Uh, I would like the color of the jacket. I mean, with the gray and then the white and the black. If you wear something simple as a black bottoms as I am right now, it all goes together, and then you can wear whatever color shoes that you like. So. I completely agree with you. What do you think will be the next trend in athletic wear? Um, I really like um, open stuff up that's like um, different cuts in the fabric mm -hmm. is really nice too. Um, yeah, like a cut open in the back yeah. or in the front mm -hmm. or just anything like reveal, like mesh or anything. That makes like, what about you? Yeah. All right, for guys, we're not really keyed up about the whole cut open <laughs> thing. Sorry, so I like the... Uh, we like uh, materials, so like more of a color is more of like whatever you can put on here and can be really creative with the design, mm -hmm. then we're going to pick up on that. So like for Nike and Adidas, with them coming out with new lines every, every year, is, is really cool, so... Um, according to Cosmopolitan, actually, the new trends for women, sorry guys, not really featured in Ooh, Cosmopolitan, <laughs> is mesh. It's really see-through, is what I have on today, is a Nike, like see-through, you really can't see like every little detail of my skin, but you can like see like the color of it, yeah, obviously. Yeah, this is slightly. And then patterns are going to be a new thing, like they're like bringing out new patterns since Adidas is like really big on bringing back their new original patterns, mm -hmm. so. I feel like that's going to be it. But thank you guys for coming in today. You guys did a really good job showing off your swag. Yes. But <laughs> back to you guys. As you can see, we have some new faces here with us, but they'll become pretty familiar to you very soon. Yeah, these lovely ladies are your new hosts of What's Up Weekly, Laura Puglisi and Alex Eady. Yes, girls, so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to your new audience. Hi, guys. I'm Laura Puglisi. Um, I am going to be senior next year. 
um, broadcast journalism major and political science minor. Um, you might have seen me on here before covering hard news, but I will be all entertainment next year, mm -hmm. so I'm really excited. Awesome. That's Alex. very exciting. And I'm Alex. I am a junior. I'm a broadcast journalism major, and I've done a couple of things on What's Up Weekly before, some interviews, some packages, but I'm super excited to be hosting with Laura next year, and I'm just super honored that you guys chose us. Thank you so much for this opportunity. You are Fox. welcome. Mm -hmm. And now both of these girls will be seniors next year, so make sure you keep your eyes out for them. We are so excited for you guys and welcome. Well, that's what's up this week. Make sure to tune in, make sure to follow us on social media and keep up with all your local and entertainment news over the break. And like us on Facebook, IUS TV News, and follow us on Twitter at What's Up Weekly IU. Signing off for the last time for What's Up Weekly, I'm Sierra Hignite. And I'm Sheila Riley. Thanks for watching.